for certain articles to get written? What do you mean? I don't know, like, does Forbes ever say like, oh, we want this kind of article? Or it's just, mm -hmm. you submit whatever you want and they decide whether it fits them or not. Yeah, um, I mean, we have like, we have suggestions of like important news throughout the day, um, like top stories. Um, but very rarely do they have to do with like BTS. Um, or if they do, it's like, kind of like the, it's like the one story of the day. Like, here's the like general news. Like when they postpone their tour dates, it's like, all right, the big news of the day is that they postpone their tour. And then if you want to do like other takes or angles on that, um, that's kind of up to each writer to um, use the news as like a jumping off point to dive into, you know, deeper topics or other angles. Um, and that's what I like to do. Yeah. And we appreciate it. <laughs> We're happy to help, happy to serve. Yeah. Uh, what would you say is the best way to support an article? Um, just, just click it, just read it. Um, and you know, I, I make a point to share the stuff that I write on Twitter. And so, you know, engaging with that, liking it and retweeting it is always a great way to help. Um, you know, when, when some of the bigger BTS fan accounts or like BTS news accounts share stuff, um, that gives it a huge boost. And that is really helpful for me. Um, you know, the opportunity to build my personal, um, number of followers is always helpful because it's kind of a snowball effect with like the future things that I publish. Um, so that's always helpful. If you like what you see, uh, feel free to follow me on Twitter. Um, but yeah, you know, just, uh, just giving it a read. Okay. Um, I would, oh, I would also say, um, if, uh, if, if you do feel compelled to share it on social media, uh, linking is more effective than screenshots just because, uh, with screenshots, a, if anything does have to be changed, then the screenshots are kind of stuck there forever. Um, and uh, then people can just read the screenshots without actually clicking on the link. And that kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> as, as a fandom, we usually try to screenshot the bad articles and click on the good ones. <laughs> I have noticed that and I appreciate that. That's a good tactic. <laughs> it's sort of our way of uh, uh, managing like, or like saying like, no, 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 you did bad here. <laughs> Should have it's like the same as if, uh, if somebody makes a bad tweet and you don't want to engage with the tweet, but you want people to see just exactly why it's bad. It's like take a screenshot instead of retweeting it. Yeah, uh, exactly. So we really try like, and you'll see an, under a lot of articles, I don't think it happens under yours because we usually trust uh, yours, but in a lot of articles from like CNN, BBC, Variety, you would see under the article itself, people asking, is this safe to read? And people, oh, yeah, <laughs> I've seen that. Safe. This is safe, this is, this is nothing, stay away wait for the screenshots <laughs> yeah aren't, there's like entire accounts dedicated to just screening different articles right yeah that's yeah that's that's dedication yeah well we learned a hard way because <laughs> <laughs> what happens is usually you comment and you engage with it and then it's just it, it it gives them like more incentive to keep doing it so if we screenshot it and post it somewhere else then you take the engagement away from the original post and do the engagement on different uh, tweets. So it does still keep the conversation going. We still discuss it, but it's not under the original tweet. So they don't get the engagement. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. There have been times where, um, you know, the more people in the fandom that I follow, I've seen like entire conversations um, dragged out where I understand that everybody is talking about the same thing, but I don't actually know what they're talking about. And then I have to like go back and try to find the source of it, which normally happens when people are upset about something. Um, it's almost like an entire universe of like subtweets about an article or, or something that they thought was a bad take. Yeah, it really rolls so quickly. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to find like where it started from and how it progressed. Yeah, I feel like a detective. <laughs> <laughs>
of the tabloid kind. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think the ratio is becoming more favorable. Um, I mean, there's going to be plenty of uh, websites and publications uh, that, you know, that's kind of their beat, the more, um, but I do think, I think more uh, mainstream US uh, and Western publications are, are realizing that uh, BTS is a force to be reckoned with culturally, musically, um, business-wise. And so uh, it, it would behoove them to get on board and to start uh, to covering them. Um, I do think I see more places that cover them uh, objectively now um, than maybe a few years ago. But obviously there's still, you know, publications that feel the need to uh, get their digs in or, or write dismissively toward them. Um, but honestly, I, I do think that a lot of the publications I read, the, the music oriented ones, um, they're, they're doing their best to uh, treat them as a cultural sensation and to write about them with respect uh, and, and with knowledge and appreciation. I think Ami is a bit more uh, wor wary about articles these days or for the last few years because we had all those uh, K-pop experts that very quickly turn took that K-pop knowledge they had and immediately placed it on BTS um, for the worst, obviously, it's never for the best. And we had even the Hollywood Reporter do you, did you read that article? So it's a mess. I did, <laughs> In bad <I> did, <laughs> I did not because I knew that I, that I wouldn't be happy if I did read it. I read excerpts. I read the, uh, the screenshots that people shared on Twitter and I read the, the, the feedback on Twitter. Yeah. And I kind of thought, you know what? I've only got so many hours in the day. <laughs> a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff on the internet that I could read. And I don't think that this is going to um, add value <laughs> to my life. Um, but no, I, I do know, I kind of get the gist of the article, the, uh, the, the dismissiveness and the laziness with which the, the whole story was approached. And I mean, that, that should be, that is infuriating. You know, that yeah. everyone's got the reasons for writing like that. Maybe they wanted to be glib or they thought it was cute or funny. But I mean, admitting that you don't care about your source enough to you know, do your homework is, that's not cool. Yeah, I think like it especially hurt because it was like an exclusive. They flew him to Korea, like he got to sit and eat with them, like and most journalists don't get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. like, they, this was a cover for the Grammys. Like it was for the Grammys to take notice of this band and instead it was so dismissive because it came out right when the Grammy uh, people were supposed to add their nominations. Mm -hmm. At the same time we are right now, basically. Yeah. Um, so now Variety is doing a cover story on them, <laughs> thankfully, but hopefully it seems good. <laughs> um, I didn't know that. That, yeah. that should be, I, I'll, I'll be excited to read that. Yeah, I, th I think so. They, did, they said it was like the Grammy uh, issue and the BTS are on the cover. And they did like tidbits from the interview with them. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and it seems like actually talking to them about their music and what they do, which is what we thought that article was going to be, but it wasn't. Um, yeah. 표정이 있도록 다른 자 <목소리도>